Welcome to CREW. CREW stands for, that's right, Christians Rising Up. And I sure hope you're rising up and you're being the Christian that Christ would like for you to be. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you God for this day and this opportunity to learn more about you, to learn more about how we can live our best life, how we can live a life that pleases you. We just ask you God not right now to forgive us for our sins, for the things that we have thought wrong, done wrong, God said wrong. Help us God to truly repent and be sorry for it and so that we won't do it again. Help us God with your power of your Holy Spirit to walk in a new way um, every day. We just thank you for the opportunity, God, to please you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So interestingly enough, um, I went to elementary school outside of my district. So pretty much means that no one in my neighborhood went to elementary school with me because my mom or my dad drove us and dropped us off at school for elementary. So it was really weird in middle school when all of a sudden we had to take the bus to school. What was the weird thing about it is all of a sudden we were introduced to a whole new set of people on the bus and at school that we always lived close to, but didn't really know them. They would see us, but they didn't really know us. So I went all three years of middle school not really knowing people that well, mainly too also because I was very introverted and very shy and a nerd, so I had all honors classes. And needless to say, the people on my bus, a lot of them didn't. But anyway, uh, so I spent most of my middle school not really knowing who I was riding the bus with, who I was in the classes with. And then for high school, I made another shift and I decided to go to a magnet school. So again, it was out of my district, no one from my neighborhood, and it wasn't even the same students that I went to middle school with. So again, I was in the same boat where no one really knew me and I didn't really know anyone else. And so sometimes we realize we get into different positions in our lives or different places in our lives where we think no one really knows us. No one 100% knows us. Um, and so that kind of brings us back to this guy named Zacchaeus that we've been talking about as Samson talked about on the last video. If you haven't seen it, you can watch it afterwards. Uh, and then what we'll be talking about for these next couple of weeks where this series is called It's Personal. So the majority of people getting back to it don't really feel like anyone gets them 100% knows them very well. It would be nice for more people to just understand us, to just get us. It's not a teen thing, it's not a child thing, it's a human thing. It's just in human life, we feel like we're disconnected. But just like that feeling is a human thing, the way that God created us is to be known, is to be known by others. You are actually wired to be known. You were made to have someone know you and to have someone know you personally. So let's go back to this guy named Zacchaeus. We're in the book of Luke. So if you have your Bible app or if you have your physical Bible, you can turn to Luke. Luke is in the New Testament of the Bible. So it's near the back of the Bible. It's in the New Testament. It's one of the four gospels. So what are gospels? The gospels were pretty much eyewitness accounts of people that knew Jesus, that hung around Jesus, um, that knew of Jesus. And it's their accounts of what they saw when Jesus was here on earth doing his ministry. So we have Luke here. And so if, if you wanna go ahead and turn to Luke and chapter 19, we'll start there soon. But there are different perspectives here. And so in this particular book of Luke, it's actually the only of the four gospels that talks about Zacchaeus, which is really interesting because, so you have all these disciples that are around Jesus and they all kind of overlap on some other stories in all four gospels. But for the story of Zacchaeus, it's only found in the book of Luke. Only Luke told his story. Now, what's also interesting is that Luke was pretty much talking to an audience that weren't Jewish. And if you remember, Jesus was born a Jew. Jesus uh, related to the Jewish people, but Luke was mainly talking to people who were not Jewish. So from any background from any place, it was natural for not Jewish people to feel like they didn't fit in because Jesus was Jewish. And, and then most of the, the people in a lot of the places were Jewish. And a lot of them were Jewish, and then a lot of them were Romans around in this area. But Luke 
kind of veered off from Matthew, Mark, and John, and he was directed mostly to non-Jewish people. So in Luke's Gospel, there's a lot of stories about people that don't fit in, that didn't fit in during that time. It's easy to imagine that these people, um, that <laughs> these are the people that Luke wrote about, is the people that didn't fit in, but there's a reason why. He wanted his readers to see how, treated, how Jesus treated people like them. Luke wanted to see that there is this other group of people in society that didn't fit in necessarily, but Jesus treated them in a certain way. And that's what we're gonna talk about. So Luke shares Zacchaeus' story, um, who we learned about last week, who's outside a group. Now, Luke, uh, actually Zacchaeus was Jewish. He was a Jewish tax collector, collector um, which was super bad thing to be during those times because this person was a sellout, this person was a traitor, this person pretty much like taxed people and, and more than what they should have been taxed for and took their money and they worked for the Roman government. So pretty much the Romans looked at them as just like Jews, not high in society and the Jewish people didn't like them either because they were being taxed. So this is a hard place to be where you're surrounded by people where you really can't fit in, where it seems like no one likes you. And that's where Zacchaeus was. So Jesus comes to town and everybody knows him. At this time, everybody knew Jesus was performing miracles. He was raising people from the dead. He was making blind see. He was making deaf hear. He was making the lame be able to walk. Everyone knew Jesus. Jesus was fitting in. He was the one that they wanted to see, the one that could help them. So um, to put it a better way of you of Jesus um, and, and to see Jesus, Zacchaeus climbed that tree. He climbed the tree as Jesus was coming through the town to see him. Jesus, um, who looked out for the poor, who looked out for the mistreated people, um, he saw Zacchaeus and he called him out by name. Um, he wasn't looking to stand out, but Jesus saw him. So let's read in Matthew, in, sorry, in the book of Luke, chapter 19, verse five, I'll be reading from the NIV version, Luke 15, 19, verse five. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. He looked up and he saw Zacchaeus. Jesus took the time. Ordinary people wouldn't probably pay Zacchaeus any mind. Matter of fact, they would have said, oh, there go that tax collector, and they would have kept on walking. But Jesus didn't do that. Jesus said, hey man, I see you. Not only that, not only do I see you, but I want to spend time with you. I want to get to know you better because I don't want to just see you. I want to see you. I want to know who you are. I want to get to know you better. I want to know what makes you happy. I want to know what makes you sad. I want to know how I can help you, how I can pray to the Father for you. So this is what he was saying when he was saying to Zacchaeus, hey, come on down. I want to spend some time with you. I see you. Zacchaeus was climbing this tree to see if he mattered to Jesus, to see if, you know, it's one thing to see somebody acting cuckoo and climbing trees and doing all kinds of stuff. But it's one thing for that person to acknowledge you and say, yeah, I do see you. And not only do I see you, I'm not gonna say, hey man, why are you so crazy? Why are you in the tree? I'm gonna say, hey man, come on down. I wanna spend some time with you. So Zacchaeus was just the person who wanted to belong. Jesus went over to his place to show him that he did, that he did belong. If you ever wonder why, what Jesus thinks about you, then this story is probably encouraging because Jesus cares about you also. Jesus not only cares about your Bible reading, but he also cares about your grades. Not just whether or not you're praying or not, but also your friendships. Not just the holy stuff, but the real life stuff. Not just your cussing or your cursing or your profanity, but also your anxiety. Not just your obedience, but your relationship with your parents. Not just your sexual purity, but also your dating relationships. How's it going with that dude? Or how's it going with that young lady? It's personal because Jesus knows what matters to you. That's why it's personal in this lesson. So here's a couple of things I want you to think about here. Number one, talk to Jesus. Talk to Jesus about what matters to you. He sees you, he knows you, but talk to him. Let him know what brings you life. Let them know what you worry about. Let them know what you like. Let them know what drains you, <laughs> who aggravates you, but who also makes you happy. Jesus is never bored 
hearing from you about you and it's okay. So that's the first thing. But the second thing is to talk to others about what interests them. Jesus talked to Zacchaeus about what interests him. It's possible that there are people you've made assumptions about, just like people made assumptions about Zacchaeus. Hey, he's a tax collector. He's probably no good. He's gonna try to cheat you. He probably gonna lie to you. They made assumptions about him. He probably didn't really even wanna be in the crowd. He probably was trying to get up half in the tree because he didn't want anybody to spot him, spit on him, you know, slick, say slick words or anything like that. He might've been trying to get to the tree not only to see Jesus, but not to be amongst the people because most of them didn't like him. So don't, instead of just making assumptions and judgment calls about people, find out more about them. Be intentional about discovering what interests other people. Show them that they matter to you. Also, there's another scripture I wanna read for you and if you wanna to flip to it, you can and you can read along. It's Philippians chapter two. I'm gonna start at the ver third verse, the middle of the third verse. This is a new international version. Rather in humility, value others above yourself. Paul is writing this, the Apostle Paul. He's saying, in humility, regard others, value others above yourself. Not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the others. It's nice for you to have interests. You might like basketball, but do you know if your neighbor likes basketball? Do you know if your younger sibling likes basketball? What do they like? So he's telling us in this verse to, to value others which might means you might ask your friends questions and then actually listen to their answers about them. You may play something with your little brother that your little brother likes to play with. You may go and watch your friend play their sport even if you have no clue about what's going on. I mean like in lacrosse maybe or golf uh, or other, any other sport, you know, find out what interests them and then you can actually talk to them about it and actually make action steps. You may make an effort to include that kid that's in your school or in your class or uh, in a grade that's younger than you. You could get to know someone who is different than you. Maybe doesn't dress the same as you or listens to the same music as you. Or uh, even if you're in band, someone who plays a different instrument than you. Paul goes on in this, in this book and he talks about the character of Jesus and things that Jesus was like. And he says to make Jesus the model because this is what matters. Jesus was selfless. He looked out for the interests of others. And this will make us stand out as ones that follow him. Jesus is our model. We should strive every day to be more like Jesus. And so what did Jesus do? He cared for those that were on the outcast, that were overlooked, that were lost maybe. And so that's what he's asking us to do. Everyone needs someone who knows their name and who knows them personally. Do you know what matters to the people you know? Do you know what matters to the people you know? Do you really know what matters to your mom? Do you really know what matters to your dad? Do you really know what matters with your BFF? Ne never label someone or assume something about someone or form an opinion based off of what someone else says. Get to know them for yourself. Because we, again, we're all wired to be known. It's personal because Jesus knows what matters to us. I started this by telling you about how I went through elementary with people not really knowing me, middle school, high school, high school, I called myself ghost because I was there, but no one knew me. And I went to Valencia and UCF and I commuted, which means I didn't stay in the dorm life. I wasn't a part of sorority. So again, there were years and years of people not really knowing who I was, seeing me in class different things like that. But in my second year of my career, after I graduated from college, I met one of my dear friends that I'm still very close to today. And when I met her, it was like she knew me. She knew me so well. It literally was like she was the left side of my brain. And then I was able to move into a friendship with someone I'd known all of my life. She had been my mentor, but we became closer friends and sisters, and she was like my right brain. And those two ladies knew what mattered to me, and I know what matters to them. So you may not have anyone in your life right now, but there's a time coming. And one of the things that I had to learn that I encourage you to do is, the Bible speaks about how if you want to attain friends, to present yourself friendly. So make sure you're presenting yourself friendly. Even if you have a lot of friends, 
it's always good to know other people and to make sure that you know what their interests are because that's what we're here for. That's what Jesus came to those cities to get to know people, to help people. That's why God has placed you in this city for you to get to know people, to help people. So let's do what matters. It is personal. We need to make it very personal for those that we encounter every day. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity to get to know each other and do as you did to seek out the lost, the overlooked. God, help us, God, to follow you in your footsteps. Help us to follow you, God. Help us to love people like you love people, God. You didn't take them by their label. You loved them for who they were and you got to know them, God. And we know when we do this, God, that we'll change this city, God. So we thank you, God, for the vision that you set for this house, the Kingdom Church, to follow God, love people, and change the city. And help us, God, to make it personal to do just that. And we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Until next time, y'all have a great day.